So that's good. And if, what's the other extreme? If D is L over 2, that's the farthest that I can hold it. If uh, D equals L over 2, what's the alpha? You could put here L over 2 and then squared, uh, L squared over 4. And then here, multiply this by 3, multiply that. What's that here? Uh, L over 2G divided by, and then this is uh, L squared uh, 3, 3, 4 over 12 is 3. L squared over 3. And then you're going to have here 3 halves G over L. So that's the uh, maximum acceleration is equal to uh, 3 halves G over L if you hold it from the end. Okay? That's actually the maximum angular acceleration that you can achieve. By holding it at the end, you give the more torque. You see? Um, okay. Now, once we get the alpha, what's the A tangential? So what's going to happen is all points of this rod... Remember, this rod is like a rotating rod. It's rotating about that point. All points of the rod have a different A tangential. This one ha is the, has the fastest A tangential. This one is a little bit smaller. This one is a little bit smaller. The center of mass, let's write it this way here. So if we write the A tangential at each point, the center of mass is a little bit, uh, this one is smaller, 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 this one is smaller. This one is nothing. And then these guys here go up there, go up, go up. You see, so all points of the, let me show this to you. If I hold it at some arbitrary point, you see, like that. All points along the rod are accelerating at a different point. Now the whole rod as a whole, has one angular acceleration, right? But each point on the rod has a separate linear acceleration or tangential acceleration, you see? So the point where I'm holding has no tangential acceleration, okay? That's zero. Because all it's doing is just pivoting about that point. The furthest point away from where I'm holding has the highest tangential acceleration, okay? And then over here, it's going to go up. So to find the tangential acceleration, well, uh, the problem asks us, what is the A tangential max of the center of mass? So uh, right here, this one, A tangential center of mass. And then it wants to also know A tangential of the end. So what we do for the center of mass, A tangential of the center of mass, we would multiply we would use a, a R alpha, right? A tangential is R alpha. So multiply the alpha that you get by the distance between the center of mass and where you're holding it, which is D again. So the R is the D. So you get this, multiply this by D, you get D squared G over Okay, and then a tangential of the end is going to be what? You multiply the distance from the end from the where you're holding it, which is uh, d plus l over two. You see, so it would be d plus l over two times the alpha, which is dg divided by l squared over 12 plus d squared. So the point of this is that uh, you first always calculate alpha, then you calculate the tangential acceleration along all points of that rod by multiplying the distance between that point and the pivot point. So now I could, based on whatever d is, I could calculate what the... Uh, what the A tangential is. So if D equals to, let's do this limiting case again. If D equals to L over 2, what's going to happen? Okay. 
if D equals L over 2, what's the A tangential of the center of mass going to be? Okay. Well, uh, you can, we already got the alpha uh, at L over 2, so you can just multiply here 3G over 2L times L over 2. Right? Multiply the alpha max times L over 2, so you get uh, this, this cancel, 3 fourths G. So what that is, is saying is if you hold the uniform rod from the end and you let it go, at the point where the rod is horizontal, this here, this point is going to experience an acceleration 3 quarters of G. Okay? And uh, the a tangential of the end, then you multiply the alpha max times the distance of the end from the pivot point, which is L in this case, right? And you get a very interesting answer. 3 halves G. So the reason this is interesting is because this is one of the only times where you can get an object to accelerate more than G without using any machines. Just by doing free fall. Just by holding this, okay? Well, you need some kind of a machine or instrument or person to hold this end. You at least need that, okay? But by just letting it go, you get an acceleration here at the tip that's one and a half times the acceleration of gravity. Okay? So it accel accelerates faster than G, that point. But it only occurs a split second. After the angle then gets to be at this point, the acceleration is less and less and less and less. By the time it falls down here, the acceleration is zero. Okay? It doesn't accelerate. So momentarily, you can accelerate greater than G, okay? So you can use this one day to design a carnival ride, have people sit on chairs like this, all along, have some kind of a machine that holds this end stable, and then drop them, like uh, kind of like the ride free fall on Magic Mountain. The free fall takes you up, drops you. What's the acceleration you experience there? G, right? This one, you get in some kind of a place and you just climb up the stairs. People sit down all over the place. And then the machine holds the uh, bottom and then lets it go. And depending on where you're sitting, you have more fun, okay? The people who want higher acceleration up here, they're going to have acceleration one and a half G. So they're going to be able to accelerate greater than G. They're going to be able to feel one and a half G forces. Okay? The people sitting at the center of mass will, ex uh, will experience a three quarters G. Okay? So where would you need to sit in order to experience G? Okay? Uh, you would need to sit. Uh, what's my alpha? 3 halves GL, right? So if I ask the question, where would you have to sit to experience G? So then what would that, well, how would you do that? You would multiply the alpha you would say, uh, let's say x is my variable, multiplied by alpha, and set it equal to g. x times 3 halves g over l equals g. g, g cancel, and then x equals 2 thirds l. So you would have to sit about 66% of the way up the top to experience uh, g. And the same goes true with the ruler. The 66 centimeter line here, this is 50, 10, 